When we walk with the Lord in the light of His words, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. A pleasant morning to all my fellow people of God. I greet you well this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. He who has loved us with an everlasting love and has sacrificed his life to secure our redemption. God's offer of salvation gives us hope in a world of devastation and hopelessness. Today's scripture reading comes to us from 2 Corinthians 10, 2-5. Reading from the Christian Standard Bible, it reads, I beg you that when I am present, I will not need to be bold with the confidence by which I plan to challenge certain people who think we are living according to the flesh. For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Today's topic, overcoming strongholds. What are strongholds and how do we conquer over them? The word stronghold is used to describe the Christian spiritual battle. A stronghold is a fortress. This word is used metaphorically to describe those things in which mere human confidence is imposed. You see, Paul says that many of us as Christians struggle with the task of pleasing God in every era of our lives. Paul says in Romans 7 verse 19, For I do not do the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil that I do not want to do. Why do we find it so difficult to be consistent in doing God's will? If we are honest enough to admit, many of us as Christians struggle with this challenge. Today we discover an answer in our scripture reading. The first thing that jumps out at me in verse 2 is that some of us as believers think that we should live according to the flesh. But verse 3 admonishes us that although we live in the flesh, we should not fight our spiritual battles after the flesh. For the only weapons available to us in the flesh are carnal. But verse 4 goes on to remind us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that is of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. These are fortresses in the mind. That is where the major battle takes place. Yes, in our minds and thoughts. Whenever the believer comes to understand and accept this fundamental truth, then he or she begins to notice a difference in the result of their spiritual battle. Because these spiritual weapons are effective, they are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. If you want to win this battle, if you want to overcome your stronghold, 
The first thing is to change your strategy and also change your weapon. Throw out those fleshy carnal weapons and begin to understand that the main conflict is fought in your mind. The scripture reading goes on to say, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that raises itself against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So we tear down in our minds every argument and every partition that raises itself from the floor to the ceiling of our minds, preventing the knowledge of God from penetrating and influencing every idea that enters our thoughts. Learn and understand this. Whenever there are partitions in our minds established by this high and lofty thing, preventing some of our thoughts from being penetrated and influenced by the knowledge of God, we begin to lose every spiritual battle. This is what the Bible refers to as double-mindedness. Two minds that operates independently of each other. James 1 verse 8, King James Version says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Therefore, a person who has two minds working independently of each other will not be able to win their spiritual battle and demolish their stronghold. Today you are in church serving the Lord and tomorrow you are engaged in activities that are totally against the will of God. Yes, you might give the Lord access to most of the rooms in your house. But is there an apartment where you keep him out? You have used a high and lofty thing to establish a barrier preventing the knowledge of God from penetrating and influencing every area of your life. If this is what is happening in your case, it explains why you continue to lose your spiritual battles. Remember, it is a spiritual battle fought in the mind. Again, the last portion of the scripture reading says, you have some demolition work to do in your mind. You should demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Single-mindedness is the name of the game. What are the characteristics of a single-minded person? A single-minded person is a person who has a goal that they can clearly see and visualize themselves achieving that goal, tangible or intangible. But when single-mindedness becomes God-centered, it becomes commitment. It signifies one person's determination to do what God says regardless of the cost. Take authority over your mind. Remove those partitions that's preventing the knowledge of God from saturating every area of your mind so you can take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ so you can overcome strongholds in your life. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B039. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Bye.